the 10th greatest TV show of all time, the 10th most wonderful TV show to grace God's green earth is none other than Arrested Development. Boys, this show is the pinnacle of comedy. If your parents did not show you this when you were younger, not that much younger, it's a little, it's a little PG-13, but it, it is, you know, 13, 14, if you didn't watch this, you missed out and go back and watch it right now. What Arrested Development does so well, in my opinion, if you put a gun to my head and ask me why I think it's so great, is all the characters have their own skill set that makes them funny. You know, a lot of shows you watch, there's like four funny characters and everyone else is kind of a filler character who adds to those funny characters, makes them more funny. Arrested Development, boys, Every single one of these characters has their time to shine. They all have their moments. It, it, it's so freaking good. Although, to be fair, after season four, it falls off so hard. It just is never the same again. So that's why it's number 10 on the list. Because it's still great, but season four on is just kind of... Ooh, not exactly the best is what I'm saying. Anyway, boys, speaking of the best, welcome to the 10 greatest TV shows of all time. By Jared. That's, that, that's me. <laughs> By Jared, yeah. Today, we're going over the 10 most phenomenal TV shows to ever have existed, in my opinion. Look, boys, I'm not a professional, and also, just so a lot of you don't start coping in the comments in a minute, I'm a young man, I'm a young lad, and I have not seen that 70s show. I've not seen Friends, I've not seen Cheers, I've not seen a lot of shows that you probably think are classic. So forgive me, this is my personal opinion. This is not IMBD critic reviews. This is my, we're in Jedward's world now, and let's get into it. After we move the camera back to where it rightfully should be in the top right corner. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Let's get on with it. And at number nine, the ninth greatest TV show of all time, boys, it's The Simpsons. I know I said it's not gonna be a lot of classics that I haven't watched, boys. You better freaking bet your money that I've watched The Simpsons. I've watched every single season of The Simpsons, every single one, every single episode. I've never skipped one. It is one of my favorite shows of all time. And here's what I always say about Simpsons. There's kind of a trifecta of animated TV shows, you know? There's The Simpsons, there's Family Guy, and there's South Park. Family Guy has a ton of really good clippable moments. Like, the episodes themselves aren't that great, and the stories of the episodes aren't that good, except for the time travel ones. I freaking love the time travel ones. But they have a lot of good moments that you post on social media and get likes from. South Park is just freaking crazy. I mean, it's funny, but it's just, it's just like, you're watching, and you're like, whoo, whoo. these kids drop the F-bomb, these kids are pooping into it. It's just, just disgusting. I love it, but it's disgusting. And then Simpsons over here, is kind of a mix of all three in my opinion. Simpsons has really good stories, at least the first 20 seasons do. After season 20, they all kind of start to fall off a little bit, but Simpsons has really good stories in their episodes for a while. The stories are based around good plots and the characters are really well done. And on top of that, they're also pretty funny sometimes. They have some really good funny moments and they're a little bit edgy sometimes. They make some funny crash jokes. So it's kind of a mix of all three. And in my opinion, it's the most legend. You, you can't overlook them. I gotta give it props. Simpsons is number nine. Next, at number eight, we have Lonesome Dove. Now this one, I would be surprised if a lot of you have watched this one. Lonesome Dove is one of the greatest books I've ever read in my entire life. I read it this summer. My mom recommended it to me. I freaking loved it. It was phenomenal. Plus, loaded cast, you know, Robert Duvall, uh, Tommy Lee Jones. The actors are so good. The story is so good. Lonesome Dove, if you've heard of that, I'm actually gonna be really impressed. Leave it in the comments so I know that you are one of the few lucky ones who have been blessed. All right. At number seven, the seventh greatest show of all time, it's just, it's how it is. Peaky Blinders! You don't mess with the Peaky freaking Blinders, mate. I love Peaky Blinders. My friend Christian put me onto the show, and it, it's just phenomenal. It's so good. I mean, you see all the memes about it. You see all the Thomas Shelby memes, the Sigma male motivation memes. It genuinely is really good, though. I love Peaky Blinders. Also, look how freaking tall this guy is. The frick? I'm looking at this right now. I got this picture offline. And these guys are like normal height, all around this height. This guy's head's cropped off. This guy's... You know, we gotta do something about this, boys. We gotta do something about this. Let's get a little, let's get a little rounded head there. Over the top we go, and we'll finish off the eyes. It looks like he has a beginning, but we'll finish him off right here. And then we'll give him a nice hat. We gotta give him the Peaky Blinder hat. He wouldn't be a Peaky Blinder if he didn't have this beautiful cap right here. You can't, you can't even see it over the background. But yeah, boys, I think we got it. We have here the newest Peaky Blinder. Look at him walking around at seven foot eight from the looks of it. God rest his soul. We've done our duty, boys. And now we're moving on to number six. And number six is The Boys. I watched The Boys recently, one of my friends, uh, all these shows I got put onto by my friends, but I watched this, watched this recently and I loved it. I thought it was really good. I know it's kind of a basic show. I know it's like, oh, The Boys, so, so represent, represent, representative of American society today. I, I just thought it was a good show. I really did. I thought the theme was really good. I also think Homelander is just one of the greatest films I've ever seen. Homelander is awesome. There's a video essay I watched recently. Um, let me see if I can go find it. Yeah, here it is. The YouTube channel is called The Closer Look, and it's called How to Write a Terrifying Villain, The Boys. I, it's 30 minutes long, totally worth the watch. It's an awesome video. I'd recommend it to any of you. Anyway, let's get back to the presentation, and speaking of The Boys, by the way, because, you know, The Boys, there's a little secret hidden in this slide, boys. <laughs> boys, see what I keep doing here? Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little secret hidden in this slide. Can you guess what it is? Well, let's just take a gander at what happens if I move my camera 
couple inches to my left. <gasps> subscribe! It would not be a Jordan video if the subscribe button was not hidden in the presentation being displayed. Boys, only a small percentage of you are actually subscribed. I, I just think you should try. Hey, look, you watch my videos every week. You're really excited. Your cheeks light up. You're all rosy and red when you watch my videos. I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. It'd really help me out. Thank you very much. And now we're moving on to slide number six after we move the webcam back where it properly belongs, as all things should be. At number five, Better Call Saul! Boys, I watched this show right after I watched Breaking Bad because I was on the Breaking Bad hype train, and Breaking Bad probably Maybe, not that I would know, but Breaking Bad might be on this list, so stick around to see where I put that, because I think you might be a little surprised. But, Better Call Saul is the younger brother of Breaking Bad. Uh, seasons, I think there's five seasons total, so seasons three through five are just some of the best television I've ever watched. Seasons one through two are a little slow. They really take their time, they draw it out. Vince Gilligan's one of those guys who loves to have a ten minute intro, and it's just this. It's just, it's just a water bottle getting like looked at funny and like spinning around fluidly and then you find out it's not even a water bottle it's like paint that they're using to paint some guy's body i, I don't know it's just freaking weird the way they do that i mean it's kind of cool sometimes but it's weird i'd really recommend this it's it's worth the hype and uh yeah i think it's awesome deserving of the number five spot i officially bestow it with hippity hoppity joe it approves now moving on to number four you know what time it is boys ba -na -na -na. Ba -na 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 Batman the Animated Series. Hopefully that scene did not annoy you too much because it was the Batman Animated Series theme song. Just not done very well. I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't have the singer's voice. I, I try my best, but I'm only, I'm only human after all. Anyway, Batman the Animated Series, truly one of the most slept on Batman pieces of work ever. Oh, wait, you can't even see the Animated Series part. Down the webcam goes. Batman the Animated Series is one of the most slept on pieces of art ever created about Batman, ever. The show itself is really freaking good. I used to watch this when I was really young with my siblings, and we loved it. We, I remember, I remember we'd eat, we'd be sitting there eating grilled cheeses, and we'd watch, we'd put a computer up, and we'd watch Batman the Animated Series, and we all loved it. We'd always try to find the episodes with, like, villains we knew, because I'll, I'll say this. A lot of Batman the Animated Series are, like, random villains or, like, random huge plots with, like, mystical powers and Ra's al Ghul, which I just didn't find as interesting. I loved the Mad Hatter episodes, the Harley Quinn episodes, the Riddler episodes. Those were the lifeblood of Batman the Animated Series. But the show is phenomenal. Like, if you haven't watched this, you're really missing out. Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill as Joker, it all comes together so well. I think it's really underrated. Number three, The Clone Wars. Boys, I love Star Wars. Clone Wars was gonna be on here. Look, Clone Wars, I know a lot of you might not agree with this. A lot of, a lot of you might be saying to yourself, oh, Clone Wars, kids TV show. Boys, if you say that, you have never watched The Clone Wars. Clone Wars is one of the best TV shows I've ever watched. It really helps I greatly enjoy Star Wars, I'll be honest. Oh, the webcam's going back up. I completely forgot about it. But. The prequels would not be looked at the same without the Clone Wars, without the background ads. It's also just great because it's just seven seasons of some of the best stories in Star Wars. Great characters, like it introduces Ahsoka. Ahsoka's one of the best characters in Star Wars. Brings back Darth Maul, great character. Builds on Anakin and Obi-Wan, all these things. Does so well. Honestly, if you're watching this video, you probably already love the Clone Wars. I don't have to convince you. I just, I'm telling you, phenomenal show. Really freaking good. I highly recommend it. All right, we are in the final two now, and coming up at the number two spot, it's none other than The Office. Boys, it, it had to be The Office. The Office redefined sitcoms as we know it. This style of, oh, look how bad this picture is. It really looked better when I got it off the internet. I'm just looking at it now. I apologize for doing this to your eyes. Let's, uh, let's find a solution to this. Ah, there we go. That's a little bit better. It's a tad better. Look, The Office redefined cinema as we know it. If, if, if The Office did not exist, we would not have had like Parks and Rec, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, all these shows were really shaped by The Office in a lot of ways. Plus, it's just hilarious. Like, Dwight Dwight and Michael Scott are the best characters in The Office by far, not even a contest. All these other characters are great too, though. The, the interactions work so well. Creed back here, tucked away behind Aaron, is a sleeping gem, a sleeper cell in The Office, one of the best characters, one of the funniest characters. I really think that you all know how great The Office is, and it truly is, like, redefining cinema to some extent. Finally, at the number one spot, as the greatest TV show, to ever exist from Jared's point of view, from Jared logic, you probably know what it is. And it's probably pretty, pretty common thought about what it is, but it's none other than Breaking Bad. Boys, Breaking Bad is one of the greatest TV shows, not one of, the greatest TV show I've ever seen. I love it so much that I watched it all in one month. It's 63 hours of cinema, I watched it in one month. Do not tell my mom, I watched it during school a lot, but it was so good. I was totally worth it, I'm glad I did it, and it really got me hooked. Anyway, boys, those are the 10 greatest TV shows of all time, and it's Jed Week, so watch tomorrow's video right here. I think it's gonna be the greatest movie trilogies of all time. You'll really like it. I hope you agree with it. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye.